So do we do an intro? <clears throat> yeah, like a hey guys. Okay. What's up guys? Hey guys, could you like, oh, comment, and subscribe? <laughs> Let's never do a hey guys. <laughs> Just <laughs> if like Beatrix kiddo it and any time they say like, hey guys, it's like mm. <laughs> Let's let that be our intro. What we do <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's never do it, hey guys. So should we go in order you think? Yeah. Yeah, why not? That makes sense. Bad moms. Bad moms. They're moms. I never saw it. Neither. neither I've uh, never yeah. seen the film, but uh it's a hilarious clip. Yeah. It just worked as a great intro, I think. <laughs> well, and the title is like an inf- the, their moms, and they usually feed their kids cereal. Yeah, and it's like that inversion. And I guess I guess it's a good kind of lead into um, maybe the decision for the music, um, just because I think that that kind of changes the tone of that scene so much, right? Where it, it feels. So much more intense, maybe, than <laughs> even it, it naturally yeah. does, where just it kind of has that ominous tone behind it. And so. I think it was like a pop song or something was playing in the right. original. But they look like bad bitches. Yeah. Yeah. Bad, 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 I mean, that's how they look. That's the point. Yeah. But that idea of like, um, mo- like parenthood or subverting the idea of, of being a parent or the parent child relationship comes up in a lot of the serial clips. Yeah, that's like the, one of the overarching themes, right? For sure. So I guess what was one of the points in, uh, do you think, one of the main points in um, arranging serial clips together? Like one of, like one of the main arguments that yeah, arises? Yeah. Like, I, think it's, I think it's definitely that, that subversion of parent-child relationship or like or, power, power or, struggle. Or just adulthood in general, right? Like, uh, so then the bad moms, is like really kind of brings that out, right? Where they, they're just so childlike in that moment. Because just realizing now, none of these clips actually have anyone eating cereal like normal. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, I, it was. It's kind of hard to come by. It's like if you're gonna use cereal in a film, you can't. You don't really see it come up as just. Well, th- this is the breakfast moment. You know, it doesn't. Doesn't really seem to work that way. I guess for some reason, like in the in the Hurt Locker, for instance, that's that's supposed to say everything you need to know about that. Why that character can't adapt. Yeah. In society anymore. Yeah. It does it so immediately, too, right? It's just the the angle in that shot is so good, where it, it makes that aisle seem so much bigger than it is, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I think these movies, I don't know why, cereal specifically, but it just seems like they always use cereal to do something more than just show someone eating cereal. And so the first three clips, the locations are all the same. They all take place in a supermarket. Yeah. Which is cool, right? So then the first clip, the bad mom's clip, is the mo- is mom's. And then the second clip is he- he's a dad. Right. And so and it's, um, I think, again, that idea of the sense of power, I think, is a cool thought that's kind of happening there. Where they're, the moms are kind of reclaiming it versus he is then losing it there. Where he's just so unused to the space that he's kind of he doesn't feel comfortable there and he's, that's kind of taken away from him by that object. And then it's weird that, or it's kind of cool that it's followed up with Liam Neeson, right? Who's like... He's supposed s- to play his taken character. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> just literally the same guy. And then just going in and saying like, just that, that cadence to it, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, we were, we were talking about how like, not just in that clip, but in that clip particularly, but in all these clips, you have to bring a lot to the table in terms of like cultural expectations and like what you know about certain things like breakfast cereal. You have a certain conception of what breakfast cereal is or supposed to be or how it's supposed to be used, right? And the same thing with that Ted clip with like Liam Neeson. We know what kind of character he's trying to be. And so in that context, you know, that's where the humor comes from. Yeah. Without Without our knowledge of Liam Neeson or breakfast cereal and you know like yeah everyone knows that tricks aren't just for kids you know that's right. that's where the comedy comes from and it's also like the idea that that he's that character always right like everything that he does in his life has yeah. that same kind of intensity of thought process <laughs> yeah it's like and it, it feels like a le- it feels like a family guy joke sort of come to a uh, life. I mean, that's that's, yeah. that's all of Ted. Yeah. That's maybe why I feel like I can't watch either of them. <laughs> it's because 
Like, yeah, we started with a couple of clips that we were like, no, we've never seen these movies, but that's they're, they're doing something interesting, <laughs> at least with cereal. Toy Story is kind of cool because so Woody Woody falls into or forces himself into the cereal, and the cereal sort of left over, and the toys are sort of becoming left over. He oh, Woody I feels know, like yeah. He's gonna be, uh, discarded, and that cereal sort of probably left over from the morning. I imagine where the kids didn't finish their cereal or something. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is one of the best, one of the first examples of cereal def- like helping us to define a character. Like we understand Sid as a kid who would leave a half-eaten bowl of cereal in his room to rot. You know, or just like that sense of decay that kind of comes with him in general, where it's literally Woody with the mark in his head from where he like tried to sunspot him with yeah. the with the, the Death looking ring. glass, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then moving from one psychopath to the next, um, get out. Yeah. <laughs> well so what did you Chris, what did you say Jordan Peele sort of, if you want to cite that? Yeah, I I I I would want to cite that. I don't have it in front of me. I would totally cite that. Could, we, could, we ma- could you massacre it? Yeah, let's see. If I can, let's see if I can just find it. Uh, but yeah, he was talking about how he used like milk intentionally. That um, I read somewhere that it was like a that it's like a trope in film now to represent um, like white supremacy with milk oh, on wow. the screen. Yeah, that that's like a thing that's happening. Uh, I think there's that that reading too that was going around for a while where it's like because she's separating the Fruit Loops and the milk, right? That it's the Fruit Loops being such a colorful fruit, right? Then it's a separation of race, right? Yeah, and that's so. obviously like what so much of that movie's uh, dealing with. Yeah, he said. Well, we changed the the music on pretty much all of our clips, but in that one in particular, he he put. Um, you know, whatever 80s track that is playing, uh, oh, I've had the time of my life, um, because ah. he wanted her to seem like she was uh, stunted, mm-hmm. like like in, in her mind she was an adolescent, so Serial, of course, calls to mind childhood, and she's listening to this 80s anthem, and um, yeah, and, and also I think just the idea of not eating cereal properly is just the mark of a true psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you that you just bit a Fruit Loop in half? <laughs> well, I often eat things in one bite that normally you shouldn't, and she's eating things in multiple bites that are one bite. It's just it's such one a biter. deconstruction of the like cereal process. Yeah. It's just so it's so viscerally upsetting. That might be the like one of the more horrifying moments of the whole movie. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so what's interesting about putting Get Out and Pulp Fiction next to each other is um, there's uh, danger or violence happening. Uh, unaware to both of those characters. Through really subtle actions also, yeah. right? So in Get Out, her family's getting killed by um, the main character. And then in Pulp Fiction, one of the uh, John Travolta's characters driving to his house and he's just eating cereal um, and laughing and uh, the, her- the, her- the drugs that John Travolta's character sold to his character has uh, o- caused someone to overdose. Yeah, there's like this insidious violence happening like all around. But, but those scenes are very, like, serene, mm-hmm. very removed in some weird way. Yeah, the characters who we focused on are uh, serene. Yeah. I think it's interesting that it seems like we don't have any kids other than the Logan shot and... We're jumping around here, but, like, the Logan shot and then the Honey has Shrunk the Kids. Matilda. The, and Matilda, right? So, but those are the only times where it's actually children, children right? Everywhere else it's an adult yeah. so that's, like... It's and that's revealing so much of their character versus in those, those in those shots. It's like they this is supposed to be further evidence of them being children, right? Yeah, and even in the three that we have legit children in them, they're they're not acting like children act, or they're you know they're not eating breakfast like children eat breakfast. You know? Yeah. So it's some strange extenuating circumstances that somehow makes them in that moment not a child anymore. Yeah. So the Simpson uh, Tarantino clip was a gem of a find. Yeah, that was an obscure one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I That's early that, Simpsons. Like, what was that, season eight or something? <laughs> yeah. I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a longer clip. It's like, but that, that, just that line about serial being connected to violence or violence being everywhere, you know, it's like, it's just too perfect. It's a perfect lead into the Kill Bill shot. <laughs> I felt like I think um, reviewing it like this last time that was the first time I noticed 
the kaboom on the cereal box. Oh, uh, yeah. She, then she, like, shoots at her. The name of the cereal is, is Kaboom Cereal. Yeah. Yeah, well, Tarantino doesn't ever do product placements in his um, movies. So to then invent um, a cereal to then tie into uh, yeah. the, the next action that's about to happen. And, and just that idea of he knows what you're not paying attention to. Right? So well, the, it's right in your face the whole time, and then you're just not... And it's still surprising when it happens. Oh yeah, I'd seen that movie a dozen times. It was the first time I ever noticed that the cereal was called Kaboom. <laughs> so, but then also, going back quickly, when they do that little exchange in Kill Bill Volume 1 between the bride and O'Ren, that's a reveal of that character's name. They yeah. say, tricks are for kids, and the character's name is Beatrix yeah, Kiddo. Yeah, Beatrix Kiddo. So it's like their little, maybe they had, when they were friendly. Joke. Yeah. yeah. Friend Back when they were buddies. That's really cool. That's and really it's sort cool. of naming the, the, the aggressor, the person who sort of um, brought all this violence into this uh, scene or this uh, part of the film. Um, yeah, that's a really, he, Tarantino's very subtle with those. Um, so then, so going back to Nikita, moving into Logan, it's almost... Uh, those two clips together are really cool, sort of, because they're almost the same age, Nikita and the and the Logan character. What's her name? Do, do we uh, remember? X2 is the comic book thing because she's Wolverine. Oh, she doesn't really have a name, right? Yeah, I think it's just X2 because cool. she, yeah, she's got the she's got claws. She's got two claws in her hands and one in either foot. Oh. So that she can like jump on you while she stabs you. Like a velociraptor. In her big toe. In her, I, I think it's like <laughs> the middle of the toe. foot. Well, so, I, like, I love yeah. that shot because it's like you get that we ended on on Nikita's feet mm -hmm. and the cereal, you know, she and the bride's crunching through it, you know, like stomping on her childhood, you know, <laughs> on her way out after she just murdered her mom. And, and she uh, implores her to get revenge on her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Which is, it, they're even talking about doing that, right? Mm -hmm. Doing the, the Kill Bill Volume 3 will be her story, maybe. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. So then it's kind of cool to think of Nikita as like uh, 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 the, Lo the, Logan, the little girl from Logan, sort of like a continuation of that character. Right, in terms Picking of our up, montage. Yeah. 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 She's, oh, who now enacts violence after yeah. having seen it. Yeah. Maybe. All right. Totally. Yeah, there's, there's definitely some logic there. And then, and then kind of, we kind of take a step back from that and then the next few clips move, move a little bit away from the violent trend. As, as Matilda shies away from it, even with her expression. <laughs> but still same age child, right? About, yeah. Right? Yep. And she, she's, um, she has, she's oppressed, this character. And this is like the, one of the first times. Well, she's a, a witch, Anthony. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> she's got powers, man. She, she's oppressed, though, and I think that's pretty, um, yeah. it's an interesting parallel, right? Yeah, no doubt. And she, in, like, in, a, in, a, in a not unsimilar way, you know, the, the scene revolving around serial for Nikita or X2, is that what we're calling her? The unnamed yeah, girl in sure. Logan? Mm -hmm. Sure. The main character whose name is. What's her name? I don't know. But anyway, those two characters, you know, they, you know they're, they're, they move from this very childlike scene, right, of either about to have serial or eating their serial to being very adult. And this is like Matilda you know, having that kind of coming of age on her own where she learns to use her powers to pour herself a bowl of cereal. Very very adult thing to do, to, to make your own food, you know? Yeah, that is cool. I, I also like the idea of, and maybe this is implicit in the idea that these are all kind of mashed up together, but I think even in these scenes, you could kind of point to how cereal is just a constant thing in their life, right? So they always can trust that there's going to be cereal there, right? Cereal is like this passive action, right? I think like um, the Matilda shot is one of the first things that has cereal as something she's actively ex enjoying, right? Yeah, everything that's else true. is very, everything else is just kind of, or maybe like that's the connection to the bad mom scene where they're, th those are the only two times where they're just like, yeah, I'm eating cereal. Yeah. <laughs> and then so then that di dovetails into forgetting Sarah Marshall because his girlfriend, who is sort of, I guess, playing like a role like his mother, like he, he answers the phone and he has to lie to her. What do you, um, what do you, what do you mean he lies? <laughs> he says he that was, he's... He was eating salad. <laughs> I thought that was clear. 
he's making healthy food decisions for, for lunch. You never got down on a delicious kale salad at lunch? <laughs> yeah, he's like a man-child in that moment. Right? You never had some Captain Crunch croutons in your kale salad for lunch? So the Forgetting Sarah Marshall and Friday are both grown men who are still living like, sort of living like children, I think. Yeah, I think those are totally related in that, in that way. Because even the, the, you know, the arc of both of those characters, it shows them kind of you know, coming into a certain level of maturity. Um, so to, to begin, and both of those films begin with the scene of cereal, which is not only appropriate because you, you know, it's what you might begin your day, day with, with yeah. right? but it's, it's also a, a sort of mark of adolescence or, or childhood that, that they can then move out of. And, and there's that, re that resistance to... Um, with the kind of jump forward in Forgetting Sarah Marshall where he's talking about cereal um, and then Ice, uh, Ice Cube about to throw it away, right? So that idea that they're being kind of pushed out of that station um, by these uh, external forces and that cereal is the thing that allows them to, like their relationship to it is what's allowing them to kind of resist those, that forward progression. And that Friday scene also, just in the, the dialogue, uh, it speaks to um, sort of the cheapness of cereal. And then it speaks to those characters like... Ha, um, oh yeah, cereal's very affordable, right? It's very yeah. affordable. And it, ta it, it immediately gives you context to sort of that world where this family might not be, as, might not be well off and to throw out cereal's uh, a sin. And it also makes that joke that all the older generations who say, I, when I had to walk to school, I had to go uphill both ways or something. Yeah, yeah, it allows for that. You understand so much about that family just based on how they treat this bowl of cereal, right? Like uh, uh, Ice Cube's character is more about excess and he'd rather have it all, right? But his father comes from a world where they had nothing and he's you know used to living that way. It's a generational divide, like you said. But, the, but he still had cereal. He did. He didn't was, but he didn't have cereal. a bowl to eat in. <laughs> so then how did he eat it? Would he do the, would he do the cup? Would he do the Breakfast Club would thing? Cup I think he would have made a Breakfast Club sandwich. But before we go from the Breakfast, before we go to the Breakfast would he Club use a sandwich, spoon? I got to I got to <laughs> shout shout out this article I read, and we'll we'll link these um, so that you you know if you care you can look into these a little more. <laughs> but um, I read this article that was like um, that that moment, uh, not just the film Friday, but that moment where he's eating that cereal and and that is about to throw it away and gets scolded by his father and everything. It, it like humanized Ice Cube in a way that he hadn't been in the public eye for a very long time with NWA and their yeah. very violent you know music, especially for its time, debatable, but it, it definitely showed him in a more humanist light. And I think that's kind of amazing. We, we may be pushing the boundary on some of the serial commentary here a little bit, but I do think serial um, changed the public mindset about uh, hip hop entirely. <laughs> <laughs> no, while well, watching watching the About defiant, one, America, the defiant really, ones on HBO recently, Ice Cube definitely was considered fairly dangerous um, in early in his career. Yeah, yeah. and absolutely. then to only do that, what's Friday ninety five? It was it, yeah, something like that. Yeah, so then yeah. in the late eighties, for him to be sort of like um, a target by the police and uh, conservatives, to then have like this sort of maybe not family friendly because friendly it's R, but to, like you said, humanize it. Or a comical at least, right? That, yeah. that being such a huge shift in tone from the kind of, the violent rapper uh, aesthetic that we kind of was kind of thrown at them almost, or that they were trying to embody in order to resist like the oppression that was kind of set up at that point, right? Yeah. And then it's his whole trajectory of his career is basically followed. <laughs> Friday, <laughs> to just so doing amazing. silly roles where he I sort mean, of uh, undercuts we... his like intensity with um, yeah humor. And like, I, yeah, I mean we have confirmed that Are We There Yet is just like the sequel to <laughs> to Friday, right? The Friday yeah. series, the, one of the sequels. It's it's all part of the extended uh, Ice Cube universe. Ah. The, uh, the uh, Extended Ice Cube Cinematic Universe. <laughs> I think there's actually a deleted the, uh, scene. The ICU. The, Breakfast Club. <laughs> the E I C C U. <laughs> oh God. That, I would follow that series. <laughs> it actually has pretty strong tie-ins to the, the Marvel <laughs> Universe at this point. So. It has to, otherwise it won't make any money. <laughs> so then the next two, we have Breakfast Club and Pee Wee, which we sandwiched together. Yeah, yeah. This, was, this is one of my favorite kind of cuts because I think it's cool that we start out 
without milk, and then we get to this point again where the milk disappears. There's no milk in either of those, yeah. Yeah, and then it's cool that they have the transition from Friday where there's just enough milk for there not to be enough, and then there's no milk. Yeah, we're slowly running out of milk with the clips. So what's interesting about Breakfast Club and Pee Wee Herman uh, uh, is that in The Breakfast Club, that character is sort of, is she performing for the people in the room, where Pee Wee is real is performing for just himself it seems like yeah that's true yeah who who's is, he yeah who he's just like he, that yeah yeah he's just not just, he's just that odd <laughs> it's just him and his dog <laughs> he's just enjoying that way too much yeah and mr t breakfast cereal is a real thing if you didn't know that it's real there's a wikipedia page we can link that to read about it it's amazing i want some mr t's yeah that's it's a real thing I, I want pancakes really badly after that scene. Yeah, the, his, that whole scene is worth <laughs> watching because it's such an elaborate. He has this big like Rube Goldberg contraption for like how he makes his breakfast, and there's things that throw the eggs and whatever. It's it's ridiculous. I, I think it's Tim Burton's second film. Really? Is that a that Tim Burton movie? Direct, yeah, that what? he's ever directed. Because he did this uh, Frankenweenie, I think, I gotta, or, I or something, an animated yeah. short, and then he got Pee Wee Herman, and you could tell like from that clip itself that that feels like a. Tim Burton film does just that, by like costume design and whatnot. Does that movie yeah. even have a plot? I have no idea. Is it just how it's a big adventure? How did he like decide? <laughs> it's an adventure. It's his, it's his big adventure. How did he decide the order of things? <laughs> it's just pure chaos. <laughs> that would have yeah. He should have done something like pure chaos. That would have been. I really I really want to edit uh, a Pee Wee a Pee Wee Herman movie together where the end of it is just him going into a theater. No. Oh no. my god, that'd be amazing. <laughs> we kept watching that clip and like being creeped out just thinking about him, you know, like as a person, as an actor, you know, not the character. Well, no, what are you supposed to what's he supposed to do? No, so you I said you go what to the theater? Are you supposed to not you're not supposed to not jack it? You not know, supposed talk, to, uh, not maybe not talk about it. <laughs> well that's a good lead in though, right? Like, <laughs> that's a perfect lead in. To the to the church scene that we have, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I think Daniel should speak to. Um, well, so I don't know if you guys know this, but you're not supposed to jerk off according to uh, the laws of the, the Lord. The, the Lord. Lord. The Lord doesn't want you to. Yeah, no, it is in the Old Testament. It's like. Oh man! It's, because I was listening to a podcast with Seth Rogen and his, name. and his writing That's partner, and he said that the Jews were allowed to masturbate. They never said. In. Well, so like the original passage is like uh, you're just not supposed to spill your seed on the ground. Yeah, the original passage is like he <laughs> he pulls out and, <laughs> oh, no. and, just, and it falls on the ground, and then that's when God's like, "Hey, <laughs> hey!" That has to be up. You for think you think that you think that it's easy designing this stuff, sending it out into the universe? <laughs> you only get a couple of these, you know. <laughs> so, so don't do it. <laughs> I just love that. I think that the, the, the satire that it's making, if that uh, Don <laughs> clip is yeah. making a satire, it's... it's but it's, it's also... Well, it's uh, entirely serious. <laughs> <laughs> it's entirely realistic. I, I haven't seen that film. That's another one that's on here that yeah. no, I don't think any of us have seen. I want to watch it now. Yeah. It's got a 13% on Rotten Tomatoes, maybe. <laughs> That's like that's quality. That's borderline cult status. Like, yeah, <laughs> that could that could take a spike any day now. I like I like the idea though that that's another one of those callbacks to cereal being this like ever present force for Western society. Right? It's just like uh, you. It's an automatic thing. You know what it is. You know what the practice is. You know what the kind of protocol right. of it is. And so that idea that it's the, your daily life is this is how Satan can get to you is. How could Satan get well, to you through your cereal? It's, well, it's yeah. also a reversal of the like the genesis of cereal, like the Kellogg people did cornflakes, <laughs> right? <laughs> Mr. Kellogg, this is a thing. Oh, we can yeah. we can link to some of this too, right? Mr. Kellogg started cornflakes because he thought it would curb people's urge to masturbate. Yeah, <laughs> that's a real, that's legit. You can look that up. I will find some facts for you. But the, How is, Adam Ruins Everything did a whole thing on it. Do you think it's just the fiber? Do you think it's just like the idea was just you'd be like shitting so much? I don't like, know what the reasoning was behind it, but I love that. It, it, I don't know how many years later you can have this clip. You know, breakfast cereal is so mundane 
<laughs> that you can use it to satirize a, 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 a sermon, you know? <laughs> Well, so then going into anger management, I think Don Verdeen, uh, uh, anger management inverts. So the the main character in anger management is, he doesn't realize he's angry, and that could be potentially thought of as the devil getting into him, and then his anger tutor, or I guess therapist, therapist, coach, anger coach, coach, what is he? Presents him a bowl of cereal telling him to chill, which is is an inversion of Don Verdeen saying that the devil's going to get to you in your cereal. I mean, oh, yeah. is it though? I think. How did those <laughs> letters line up? <laughs> Are you going to tell me that wasn't Satan? <laughs> gonna... I want. I want one person to tell me that wasn't Satan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was Satan. It was Jack Nicholson. Satan telling me so. to. Chill. Jack Nicholson does play the devil in a movie. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Does he? I've seen The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> he plays. He plays a wolf. He plays a wolf <laughs> in a movie called Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of honey, I shrunk the kids. Yeah. <laughs> and chest hair. And jizz. Oh, fuck. Oh, dear. So, yeah, that kid is covered in milk. <laughs> but that's a, that was, um, you know, that's another, it goes back to the uh, the whole bad parenting thing. You know? Yeah. Like, you know, Usually you... kids... <laughs> <laughs> Parents usually serve their kids breakfast uh, cereal. Not now the kids are being served as a uh, child uh, being so served as cereal. So this this is where we're gonna go ahead and start uh, t- trying to tear down the uh, the industrial reign of processed sugar and what it's doing to yep. both our families mm-hmm. and future generations, and ultimately contributing to the global warming process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk General Mills. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but in, so in our in the real one, the kid makes it. He doesn't get eaten by his dad. But in ours, he doesn't. It doesn't look like he's gonna make it. In our edit, he escapes. <laughs> I like the idea. Then the, uh, you have his wife show up there, just to, like post, like immediately post grief of the children. Then yeah. like just kind of smoking a cigarette, and just being like, I remember when I liked cereal. <laughs> <laughs> She's having a post traumatic breakdown, thinking about Lucky Charms. Oh my god. I love that scene. There's that Garden State scene is so good. It's like supposed to be so awkward, you know, the 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 one guy is sitting across from the the woman he had sex with, his her son is there and it's like He's just, in a suit of armor. He's wearing his yeah, his uh fake you know, his costume armor from his medieval times shift to the night before. It's just a ridiculous scene. But her line is just too golden. I had to throw that in there. <laughs> Bunch of flake things, pink milk. I mean, favorite. so I guess this really brings us to the crux of this discussion: is do you save the mar- the marshmallows for the end? I try to. No one can. I, I mean, I do. That's another that that puts you in get out territory. So, You're a psycho <laughs> <laughs> if you save the marshmallows. <laughs> so I guess like uh, my thing ends up being. It, it, it does come down to, like, a time management thing where the there's, like, certain cereal consistencies that fight against the spoon and will, like, kind of sit on the top but resist the scooping action. And I feel like the Lucky Charms, like, what do you call them? Normal bits? Grainy? The cereal. The actual the cereal. cereal. Oh, I guess it is cereal. Not the candy. <laughs> could could just mar- marshmallows be considered cereal? I think there's a just marshmallow. There cereal. should be a just. <laughs> That'd be candy in a bowl. <laughs> no, it's it's cereal. It's, it's the opposite. It's part of, whatever, of a balanced breakfast. Whatever Tom Cruise's character is eating in Minority Report is the opposite of an all marshmallow box. <laughs> it's like oats. What so is it? angry. Oats and because he picked out all the raisins and raisin bran. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what the board meeting, the boardroom meeting was like when they were like, all right, so there needs to be a graphic on this cereal box and we're going to need to make this song. It's going to dance. And we're giving it to Gavin. Well, apparently Spielberg, two days. before Minority Report was put into production, Spielberg met with a bunch of sort of tech, tech, tech analysts and people involved in the tech industry and they uh, met, brainstormed all how they thought technology would look in the future. Which is which is really cool. So that yeah. that adver- the the advertising on the box, sort of being animated, all those screens and everything, and then the fact that he's able to uh, uh, watch a home movie of his son as almost as if his son's actually there. 
Yeah, that that context is important for that scene because that's when you talk about like what what can cereal do as an object. Well, how, how powerful really is an object in in cinema, or you know why hone in on something as seemingly mundane as cereal? Well, the the fact that he's looking through memories of his son, and then this little kitty song goes off on the cereal box that he's just eating straight out of the box because you know just pure sustenance because he's so busy he can't even be bothered to, you know, to make himself an actual meal, it, you know, that there's a connection there. It reminds him of his son. It gets him upset that he can't, you know, be with and him. And he subconsciously reaches for the cereal. Yeah, right. He's he doesn't even think about it. actively looking for a memory and then subconsciously reaches for the cereal, pisses him off, he throws it across the it's room. It's like a free association thing, right? Yeah. But tell, I mean, without, without having to, you know, be, be expository in, in its storytelling, that is a really subtle way, you know, and through the cereal that we understand his, you know, his internal conflict. The song's also super annoying. It's a bad song. It's a piece of shit. I think he just hates music. <laughs> Tom Cruise? <laughs> <laughs> he might not be allowed to listen to music. <laughs> that? Anything in the key of G, you know that's not for Scientology. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> so I think we ended with Lost because Lost ended with that scene. And it just ends so well. The good line. Is but so, that. yeah, the good, there's that good line that he ends with. But also, they're, in the context of the plot, they're babysitting this character who they don't really understand. Um, and the first time they let him out of his cell, they, give him, they offer him cereal. And that's when he taunts them. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of things that we didn't throw in there. Like, um, mm-hmm. there was a good Zoolander quote where he says, you know, He's being interviewed. It's like right in the beginning of the film, and it just didn't work for our uh, essay because it's, it's just too uh, choppy, and there's a lot of music in the background. But he says something like, "Let me pull the quote up, and I'll tell you exactly what it is." He's like talking about how he got into modeling, and he says, um, "Well, I guess it all started." The, I'm not gonna do the voice. Wow. <laughs> the first time I went through the second grade, I caught my reflection in a spoon while I was eating my <laughs> cereal, and I remember thinking, wow, you're ridiculously good looking. Maybe you could do that for a career. <laughs> so that's a pretty awesome Do one. what for a career? <laughs> Be professionally good looking. <laughs> <laughs> so that was an honorable mention. And then um, another one was uh, Christian Slater from uh, Pump Up the Volume. Uh, from 1990, where he plays oh, this, yeah. this uh, radio DJ. It's pretty awesome if you haven't seen it. I've, I've seen the movie. Um, he says, eat your cereal with a fork and do your homework in the dark. You know, it's like a very radio DJ sign-off kind of thing. Um, con- he's, like, trying to convince all of his peers to rebel, you know, like an underground radio situation. It seems like a very unproductive underground sort of activity. Yeah, I mean, aren't they always? Like, rebel, <laughs> just fuck shit up. Don't, don't make things better. So <laughs> something that we buy cornflakes. Something I think we'd like to see, because most of our clips are for our post nineteen eighty. So something we'd like to see is um, people maybe showing us some more stuff from early cinema that yeah. we might have missed yeah. or probably missed rather. Yeah, it's it's because cereal. It was like there's like cereal has a weird history of like post nuclear family. You know, so yeah, like yeah. you know mostly after the fifties, but there's a huge push in like the 80s and 90s for marketable cereals specifically toward children and stuff like that. So if you, yeah, if anybody can find anything from like pre-50s especially, but between like the 50s and the 80s, definitely, definitely let us know. I also feel like we missed an opportunity in just pulling up all the clips where rain had milk in it. So that they could, like, yeah, because that was, like, a thing where in order to record rain in older movies, they had to put milk in it so, so that it would show, it up, on show up on the camera. Whoa. That's cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's, who, there was another video I said. Could you imagine the milk, right? smell? Yeah. yeah. That is of cool. those sets Ugh. after, like, a day? Gross. We should link, we'll link to the <laughs> video uh, milk. that we've watched regarding milk. Yeah. We'll also link to uh, an Amazon location where you could buy milk if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> We're sponsoring. <laughs> well, there's... I mean, it does have essential vitamins and protein <laughs> for your... Let me just mention a few of the other ones that I wanted to throw in there but didn't fit for reasons. Uh, Flakes is a film from like the early 2000s that's all about a cereal bar. Um, you should check that out. It's not that you know mind blowing film, but the concept is amazing. I like we're talking about uh, man children with um, 
with like uh, forgetting Sarah Marshall or you know the character in Friday. Um, this is like the entire concept, the entire plot is based around the fact that this guy can't evolve beyond his childhood, so he works at this bar that serves exclusively cereal. That was a thing for a while. Like there was a spot in like, like real in real like places Hollywood. that would yeah. do that. And and they have like different flavored milks. I missed that trend. I don't I wish that I had I don't, on that I don't know that I don't know that you would wanna be. Also if you wanna see a post prime overweight John Travolta wear overalls and 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 Don Angel Wings eats cereal, you should watch Michael. Oh right, yeah. Another good uh, explanation of character, the way that he eats cereal because he's not from the planet Earth. That's uh, <laughs> like only an only an angel wouldn't know how to eat cereal. Wait. <laughs> Wait, we didn't include Deadpool? No, there's a small scene in Deadpool. Um, is it when he is Deadpool? No, it's not Deadpool. It's um, those other two characters. His girlfriend? No, uh, the other two X-Men. That, the one oh, he says, like, oh, we couldn't a, afford the main oh, X-Men. Who are they? And it's like Colossus. Right, and, it's like right before they go in the teenage uh, yeah. mega warhead. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm going to get torn up for that. <laughs> <laughs> What's my name? <laughs> We can cut this out. We can edit this out. <laughs> um, um, yeah, and then they're like, uh, they're gonna go help him or whatever. Uh, yeah. And then there's that scene from The Matrix where they they're eating that gruel that's got you know quote all the essential vitamins that you need or whatever everything the body needs he says and they they, they compare it to tasty wheat, which I think is a cereal but we decided that it's it like didn't. frosted mini wheats. It didn't quite make the cut. You guys not like frosted mini wheats? It it causes masturbation. <laughs> there was also uh, Youth in Revolt, um, which just has a pretty good scene where he's like got an alter ego, like an alien, like a like a dual personality. Yeah, and he smokes cigarettes. And he smokes Michael cigarettes. Sarah. And, he, and he ashes it right into his cereal, and then like flips the bowl off the table. It's like his you know mode of rebellion. It's a super aggressive move. Yeah, he really general. showed them. <laughs> uh, we're back. A dinosaur story. That's what? A cartoon. Oh, We're right. back. Yeah, the, the I brain, forgot about that shit. Right. So the whole the whole process of making dinosaurs intelligent is through cereal. They eat brain grain cereal, and then they can talk and, and figure out complex problems. Is that that live action movie? No, 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 no. It's animated. No, this is oh, animated. Okay. This Although is... I think there is a lot of leeway for us to talk to somebody about creating a weird back Broadway show. <laughs> There's a carnival in that movie. And there's a creepy carnival tender dude. Yes, and it is a very. That's a, I used to be terrified, terrified of that scene. Yeah. When I was a kid, yeah, I think that's what you know caused all the problems. All every problem, <laughs> ever. <laughs> uh, Child's Play has a good scene too, where the kid um, is eating Lucky. No, it was Nice Guy. Nice Guy cereal, and uh, he's the he doll's a nice guy. Pours doll. it exactly. Yeah, so it just shows like how uh, ingrained he is in that. Also playing into that like '80s '90s you know, serial advertising to, to children. I think that's, that's it. Serial can do a lot, man. It can, it can tell you a lot about character. Tell it's you a lot very about. filling. So uh, I, have, I have two questions for you guys. One is, uh, what's your favorite cereal? And what's your favorite way to eat cereal? So Cinnamon Toast Crunch. That's I a like. good cereal. It's a good choice. It's a good and, choice. Um, it's respectable. I had a rule when I was a kid. Uh, my stepmom said that after dinner the kitchen was closed, but I'd always come home really stoned and I'd want cereal. And I knew I could pour a bowl of milk without making sound, but I knew I couldn't pour from the box <laughs> without making sound. So I would just pour a giant bowl of milk and then take the whole box down into my bedroom in the basement and then just eat the whole box of cereal. Oh my God, I'm so glad that I had the context for it. Because if you were just, if you just started with like, yeah, I would pour a whole bowl full of milk and then I would go, oh, I would have, I would just that's get out territory. <laughs> You're back in the get out. I was bowl. just trying to eat I would have had one bowl, mate, no, because then I would have kept sneaking upstairs for more bowls. But mm. I, that is a that is an important point, though. Is uh, do you, <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> I, do you reuse the milk if there's enough left over? Like, so that's you just what I would add do. Depends on the cereal. I would just dust the top of the milk with cereal and then just keep eating, and that's yeah. how you end up eating a whole box. Just dusting. <laughs> the <milk. You> just <laughs> dusting. Dust, yeah, the dust. You just dust the top of the cereal, with the milk with cereal. <laughs> uh, some cereal I can like any um, like any kind of Cheerio I can do I can just use the same milk but if it's like a 
like a re- like a really flaky or a, if it changes the milk entirely, oh, like a fruity so pebble. It's a paste in there. Yeah, a little yeah. Bit. I can't do it. <laughs> it really makes the milk taste weird. I think. Yeah, yeah. it has yeah. a weird after buzz. Yeah, it's probably weird. because of the the cereal, the hormones. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> What's yours, uh, Chris? Favorite cereal? Yeah. Um, I always liked Captain Crunch, but I, I don't really eat it anymore because it tears my mouth up. Yeah. <laughs> it always did when I was a kid, but I just didn't yeah. care then. It was it, worth the pain. It's because you, <laughs> it, you want it to be soft enough that you can, like, crunch it without chewing it. Yeah. Because that, sh- that gets just so stuck in your teeth. It's so good. Though, so you try to hit it on, like, the roof of your mouth, and then it, like, fucks up your tongue and, and the roof of your mouth, as I stated. Yeah, then it was totally worth it. I feel like actually cutting your mouth gets you the sugar faster, maybe. Yeah. You're like, do yeah. you mainline that shit? <laughs> and there's also been evidence that it's, it's almost impossible to get HIV through uh, oral sex, but if you eat cereal... So if you're no, sharing your spoon... No, if you, eat, if you eat cereal that parts the roof of your mouth, you could potentially... Oh, end up with... So don't... So don't have Captain Crunch before, before your night out, uh, folks. Before, before, wow. before, before performing, yeah. It really is a morning time <laughs> snack. It's the beginning of the day. Yeah, you want time to heal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, 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 what's your uh, favorite cereal, though? Oh, no, so that's still my favorite. I just don't okay. go for it. I, okay. it's, a, it's a sad relationship I have now with cereal. It's I like just, an old girlfriend. It's <laughs> <laughs> no, now I eat, like, boring, like, you know, chia flake. Fucking trying to be healthy. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to be honest, guys. I wasn't ready when I asked this question. I just you had so much you time. Whole, you know. have a whole cabinet filled with cereal. I do. I, I like so many different cereals. Daniel is the cereal master. I, and you don't even attempt to go for healthy cereal. I No, I have all the sugary <laughs> cereal. I have the, the healthy cereal also. Like, I really am a big fan of Frosted Mini Wheats. Um, I, I'm a big fan of Captain Crunch. You keep it around, like, just in case your mom comes over. You can wait for it. <laughs> I think, so I think, uh, I think my choice is an odd one. I think it's Honeycombs. Oh, Honeycombs is nice. Honeycombs, because the milk gets into it, but they stay crunchy. Wow. And they, it alleviates the tearing up your mouth problem. Mm. You're so, like but scientist. that's also one of those that I don't go for immediately, because I want to preserve the experience. You know? And I also prefer to eat it um, alone, naked, and in the dark. Well, then it's, it's interesting to think about cereal that it has three phases. <laughs> cereal has three phases. Alone, it, 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 naked, <laughs> and in the dark. <laughs> it, it, has, it has three elemental phases. It's its hard form, and then it's its more... <laughs> Media, yeah, like the and sweet then spot. Be, and then what, what, is the mil- what happens when it binds with the milk? And I think that's why I like Cinnamon Toast Crunch so much, because the milk is delicious after. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. It is a treat in and of itself. All, it's although, like cinnamony milk. I do, gotta, I do gotta shout out, um, there was that Captain Crunch sprinkled donut thing that had just that. happened. Yeah. It was like so super quick. I don't so you're think a fad cerealist. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I would say I have a <laughs> masturbatory relationship <laughs> with cereal. You binge, you're a binge cereal eater. <laughs> Go hard on a brand and then you get to it. Do I have three boxes of cereal sitting in my house right now? From when I was a kid? I still have them. One of them is the Simpsons what? limited edition cereal. Oh, what? And two of them are Star Wars Clone Wars. Uh, no, not Clone Wars. Star Wars Attack of the Clones. I feel like I remember this shit. Episode two. Yeah. And wow. you, would, you would put them together and it created a game board. And oh. you can like play the Star Wars game. We should do that. We should play the Star Wars we game. We should play the Star Wars game. So that's what we're going to go do now, I guess. All right, let's do it. All right.